Hi, I'm still a stick, and as you can see, I'm a stick. I want to start this video by saying, F you, Jay. Yeah, that Jay. F you. I had to get that out of the way. There are rules. So what got you so riled up about Jay? Well, I was watching a video on the new Intel graphics cards, and he said this. Resizable bar is a feature everyone should have on if it's available to you. There's no reason not to have it on. So in this video, I'm going to show you what not to do when enabling rebar, and if it's really worth it. So stick around. See what I did? Why are people already clicking away? Because they can't handle all this geekness. So what's the big deal? Normally, there wouldn't be a big deal. But for some reason, rebar and CSM don't mix. Did he finally go insane? What's he talking about? The usual nerdy sh**. What this means is that if you enable rebar and you're using legacy boot, because you've ported your Windows 10 from an older Windows 7 system, like me, because it's so much easier than installing everything again, right? You're going to run into some problems. So here's what happened to me. I enabled rebar support in the UFI. I'm just gonna say WEFI from now on. After restarting, I was thrown back in the WEFI again. Hmm. My first thought was that somehow my NVMe SSD doesn't support rebar. See, rebar is a feature of PCI Express. So I started looking into the WEFI settings and I noticed CSM was disabled, which I remember enabling when I moved to my NVMe SSD so that it would actually boot into Windows. So great, easy fix, right? But I was wrong. For some reason, these two settings are not compatible. So I ended up in a situation where my PC was booting in Windows, but my display was black. How do you know you booted? Well, my Razer keyboard, which is nice, doesn't light up the way I set it up, unless Razer Synapse is running. So f*** you Razer, I'm sorry. There are rules. Anyway, if you get to this point, you can basically throw away your GPU. Nah, you just need to clear the CMOS. So you go to the default WEFI settings. And this is what sucks. Hence the fuck you J. All my fine tuning, overclocking, and especially my custom fan curve for the CPU. Gone, 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 gone. So I spent a couple hours getting my settings just the way I like them. I sacrificed three or four degrees of cooling for a quiet PC during load. I give it a bit of overclocking and then the hardest test of all, which is not what you expect. See, I can get a good overclock on my AMD 5600X stable in everything except goddamn blender which i use to edit videos man he's really geeking up now should we stop him no there's no telling what he'll do if you interrupt him he might bite don't interrupt me this is sparta ow now how to solve the problem of enabling rebar Basically, WEFI boot is needed for rebar. And the problem is that I was coming from an older Windows 7, which means that my SSD was using MBR instead of GPT. What's GPT? No one f***ing cares, that's what it is. MBR and GPT are special boot sectors on your hard drive, which contain information about how the drive is partitioned. Now, before converting MBR to GPT, you should verify if you are using MBR or GPT. So, just press the Windows key and type Format. Now, select Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Then, right-click on your boot drive and click on Properties. Under the Volumes tab, you will see the partition style. If it's MBR, don't enable rebar until converting it to GPT. Before converting to GPT, I recommend making a backup of your boot drive, just to be on the safe side. Here's how I do it. I've used this method for transferring quite a few Windows installations from old mechanical hard drives to brand spanking new SSDs. Side note, you can do this for older laptops. 
you will be amazed at the performance uplift you can get with a dirt cheap SSD. Now back to our scheduled programming, I used Macrium Reflect just because it was free and the first option that worked. You open it up, click on the drive you want to clone, click on clone this disk, select which drive you want to clone and finish. Then just run this backup now, no need to save as a backup definition file. It's going to take a while to copy it, but this is what old mechanical hard drives are good for, so don't throw them away, keep them for things like this. Once that's done, we can finally convert from MBR to GPT. Is this your way of talking dirty? Um, is there another way of talking dirty? So now, just click on the Windows key, type CMD, and right click on the command prompt. Now select run as administrator. You want to use this command to validate that everything is okay. My first try failed because I didn't have any unallocated space for the tool, so I shrunk my partition by 2 gigs in disk management from earlier. I thought I could get it back, but I can't. So it's your choice if you want to do this. The second validation worked after shrinking. Then I used the conversion tool and this is why the allow full OS option is needed. And after that I had a GPT drive. You can now enable rebar in your WEFI. Make sure to disable CSM support if you had it on. So what kind of performance increase did you get? Well, none. Firmark is the same. And I have a pretty good idea why this is the case. I'm a verification engineer and I've worked on PCI Express before. And this is not a high level software thing, I mean really down to the pins of the PCI Express. I make signals go toggle brrr. So I'm gonna make another video on rebar and I'm gonna get technical on this bit. Hint, it's bullshit on Nvidia's side. And if you like this video, just give me a thumbs down, you'll have the same frame rate regardless. So why didn't you do your technical mumbo jumbo now? People don't really stick around for my videos, so I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. By the way, if you want to see more, there's two videos over here just waiting for you to click them.